Hi, welcome back to Rust 101. This is video 33. We are continuing to work through the exercises for Module D to try and understand this stuff a bit better. Um, we're, this is going to be, uh, this exercise uh, is going to be about the dynamic dispatch or trait object stuff. So probably the hardest stuff that we covered in the lectures. So um, hopefully it'll be helpful. Uh, this exercise just says... You're going to work with dynamic dispatch to either serialize, deserialize with 30 JSON or 30 YAML. Uh, and we're going to use the file extension of the file we get given to choose. Have a look at the code in a second. It's just a, some code with a load of to-dos in it. Uh, and then to run, to run it, you just say cargo run minus minus and then give it a, a bit of path and it should be able to deserialize either config.json or config.yaml. Um, I haven't done this yet, but I have looked at the code and Kind of got my head slightly around it. All right, so uh, here's the code we've been given. So there's this struct called config. Uh, there's also some kind of error thing telling us we can use to say something went wrong. Um, and there's this trait, deserialize config. And what we're supposed to do is implement this trait and use dynamic dispatch um, to make a, to pick a different implementation of that trait based on the runtime situation. So the main method is how we get the runtime situation. So basically get hold of the command line arguments, look for the first argument, and if we don't didn't get one then stop. So if we just do cargo run like this, it says please specify the input path. And if we provide um, a path, it tries to run and then it panics because we haven't actually done it yet. So what it does is it finds the file extension of the file um, I guess this extension function gets the like last thing. So that's basically what, what we want. Um, and if it failed, somehow failed to, oh, and then, yeah, then it reads in the contents of the file. So now we've got the contents of the file, which we can use to build one of these config objects. And then what, what it wants us to do is use this extension that we've got here. Um, to decide what type of deserialization we're going to use, either JSON or YAML. And we want to end up with a config object, which we can then print out. So I think the first thing we should do is just print out this extension and see what we get. So let's do that. I mean, I think just printing out extension will do what we need. Now if we run, it's going to print out, hopefully, um, some warnings, and something went wrong. Oh, it's an option. Okay, so I guess the first thing to do is deal with if the file didn't have an extension, but we can just, um, we can just unwrap it for a second. Oh, in fact, let's just, um, let's just make it. Um, a, a panic if it didn't have the right extension. Um, file did not have an extension, I guess this would be. Um, okay, and it printed out JSON. Right, just the string JSON. Okay, so now we can do better than just saying file did not have an extension. We can match on this extension. And it's going to be one of three things. It's going to be some JSON. I think it's going to, this, this might not work, but we'll try. And we're going to do something if we get a JSON file. And it, or it could be some uh, YAML. We're going to do something slightly different if we get a YAML file. Otherwise, it's going to be something we couldn't process. In which case, let's follow the pattern of the other errors here. Um, so it should be um, unrecognized file extension, I guess. Unrecognized file extension should be JSON or YAML. That'll do us. We don't need this stuff. And I don't want to print stuff out because like there's some kind of security concern with um, 
Oh, I've written this wrong. Um, if you start printing out user input, then things might go horribly wrong. Get rid of that print then. Now let's try it. Now it should say... Um, oh, it failed to read the file because... Okay, so let's just make a file called... Tump or something. And then give it that file. It's going to say... Unrecognized file extension should be JSON or YAML. Okay, so we're doing okay. It does what we think. So now what are we going to do if we've got a JSON file or a YAML file? Well, we're going to get something which is a deserialized config. So I guess we're going to say let these, let's call it these des equal. And this is going to be of type deserialized config. But it can't just be of type deserialized config because um, you can't hold on to things that, that, that are just a trait by value like this. So it needs to be, it maybe could be a reference, but then someone would have to own it, and we're actually going to own it. So I think it's going to be a box of deserialize config, and you have to write din before that, just to say. Uh, and now this is failing because this is not giving us a deserialize config. So I guess we're going to say JSON deserialize config. Should I actually call it deserialize config? It's a very long name. Um, but I guess that's what, probably what we want. And this is going to be a YAML deserialized config. By the way, this is probably not how I'd write this um, deserialized config. This is probably not how I'd write this code, but it's a, it's a decent explanation of how to do um, dynamic dispatch, I think. Um, perhaps there's some library code that returns something with this trait or something. I don't know. Perhaps there's some reason why. Like, basically, I would want to use... Um, either just literally just a sort of an if statement or some kind of enum for the different types of thing instead of having it be dynamic dispatch. But maybe there's some, maybe some other code is passing us in a deserialized, a deserialized config that we, that we don't actually know what type it is. It's not just these two possibilities, but many others. And then once we've got a deserialized config, we ought to be able to do something like, Use our deserializer to deserialize our, I think it was called file contents, was it? File contents. Like so. So we've written this kind of made up code doesn't exist yet. Uh, I think it needs to be a reference to file contents. Um, and now we've got the pattern that we want for our code, and all we have to do is fill in the gaps, and this is often a really good way of writing your code. So let's make two objects, two structs, which implement deserialized config and have those names. We'll put them where the to-do says to put them. So struct JSON deserialized, deserialized config and struct YAML deserialize config. And for each of those, we're going to implement this trait for JSON deserialize config. And hopefully the compiler will just stick the right function signatures in. And then we'll do the same thing for the YAML one. Like so. And now our code should compile. Um, what have I done wrong? Let me just copy and paste and see whether I've typed the wrong. I must have misspelled it in some way that I just could not see. Never mind. Um, okay, so um, I guess do I need this to construct them? Oh, it needs to be a box. All right, so maybe if I yeah, I'm not sure why I needed. So I feel like I ought to be able to just do that. Oh, maybe because I maybe these should be. Oh yeah, these should just have nothing. 
These should be just trucks that, that don't have any curly brackets or anything. They're just kind of completely empty. And then we can construct them like that, I think. Like so, yeah. All right, so now everything works, right? Oh, except the, we return a result instead of a config. So I guess for now, at least, we can just fail if something went wrong. Failed to deserialize. Like so. I'd really like it if my Rust formatting config was just always in the right place. I'm not going. That's not going to satisfy me. Let's copy. Our, I think I did. I copy in a Rust format in the previous project. Uh, no, it should be two. Maybe I did one in one. No. Okay. I feel like I did one recently. Did I do a Rust format in the? C exercises. Yes. Right, so now I've got a Rust format config. Hopefully, it will format my code how I like it. No, I, oh, I think it's it's not doing it because there's some error. Not, not um, yeah, there's an uh, missing semicolon. There we go, now it's formatting it, and it's formatting it to the line length that I like, so we're all happy. Okay, so now we're done with compile errors. Now the code's not going to work, so let's just try running it. So we still got a to do uh, in our actual deserializers. So I think the last part is to actually implement this, which in the JSON case is going to be serdy JSON from stra contents. I mean, that's already got an ampersand. We don't need an ampersand. So it should be just that, right? Oh, we need to convert it into an error. Map error. Um, it's just going to be... Um, now, what does this uh, JSON error take? Oh, it takes in a steady JSON. Oh, it takes in a steady error. Fine. Okay, so we've got, we've got, oh, well, I, I was writing this wrong. This needs to be a function closure that takes in E, uses that E in the thing. And then we're going to do something almost the same here. Now, if we, interestingly, if we do try and do it with JSON, it will actually work. That's interesting. So let's just make that fail to see how that looks. All right, so look, it read in the JSON file, and this succeeded this one, and it produced a config object. If we try and read in the YAML file, it's going to try and use the JSON Oh, YML. Oh, well, it's definitely not going to work, because <laughs> that's not what the file extension I was expecting. So, uh, OK, you always test your code, huh? So. Let's make it expect the YML extension. I mean, you might well want to write code like um, this. And actually, I think a recent version of Rust made it even nicer. I think now you're allowed to do this. Does that work? It compiles. Yeah, so um, it's all working. That's cool, isn't it? I like this. That's, that's relatively new, I'm pretty sure. Um, uh, but it failed because it was trying to parse it as JSON when it's a YAML file. So let's not do the same code in both. In our YAML deserializer, let's make it use serdy YAML. And it shouldn't be a JSON error now, it should be a YAML error. Because that's expecting the error type here to be a a, a, a YAML error. Now basically, that E, it's not, I can't get it to print it for me, but that E, I guess this fromstra returns a YAML result. So it's a YAML error that we're getting in this map error function, which we're then wrapping up in this error colon colon YAML, because error colon colon YAML expects to be given a YAML error. So this code looks very similar because the serdy JSON and serdy YAML 
crates um, are very regular, which makes sense, right? So let's do cargo.yaml. And you can see it can still parse cargo.yaml. And it can parse config.json. And just for fun, let's also make a config file with a different file extension. And just check that that case works as well, now that we've done that. And it does. All right, so we've done what was needed. Let's just go over it briefly. Um, so the code that uses this stuff, we we create a variable called des, which is a box of din at deserialized config. And if we don't say this, I think it won't work. It will complain. Yeah, it complained that the match um, expression has incompatible types because the first one is a box of JSON deserialized config. And the second is a box of YAML deserialized config. And it's only when we explicitly say, um, I want you to essentially treat this as a box of DIN deserialized config that um, Rust says, okay, these both are actually the same type because I'm kind of converting them or treating them as uh, a box of DIN deserialized config. So, um, so that how it works here is we, we hold on to but we own, because it's a box, we own it, but we hold on to a pointer to a deserialized config. So we know the size of a box, but we don't know the size of a deserialized config. Which means that these two completely different types of thing, which could be different sizes. I mean, they're both, in this case, they're both zero size, right? Because they, these structs don't have anything in them. But they could be any size you like. And you can still hold either of them in DES, because DES is actually just holding a pointer to some bit of memory somewhere else, which could be any size. So now we've got this des thing, which all we know about it is that it's a box containing a deserialized config. We can call a method on that, deserialize, and that goes kind of goes through the box. It auto derefs the box and, and calls the deserialize method on the these thing. And because both JSON deserialized config and YAML deserialized config implement deserialized config, we know it has a deserialize method which returns like a known error type and a known non-error type. Passing the argument, you get back a result, which we then unwrap with this expect. Um, so uh, the, the only missing part then is that how do you make these things that implement this trait? So we have the trait. The trait says this method exists. Um, and it has like slightly complicated lifetime stuff, but essentially saying uh, the lifetime of the return value is the same as the lifetime of the thing we pass in. And then to actually implement it, we make this struct, but it's completely empty. Like we could put some stuff in there, which would be sort of interesting, right? We could say, I don't know, some kind of number, which is an i32. So now these things really are different sizes. And uh, we don't need semicolon anymore. Uh, but yeah, the key thing is, in order to make it um, usable as a deserialized config or a DIN deserialized config, you need to implement deserialized config so that it has this method. So here we declare the method you need. Here we implement the method, same signature, do some code inside there, which like does, does return this result type. And then this clever trick that the error we're returning is actually an enum, which could be JSON or YAML types, which means that the actual errors that we get back from these two, um, serialization libraries which are different can both be fitted into the same type of error because it's an enum which can be either so if an error happens here it's a, it's a json error so map error is just a it's just a thing of saying I mean, you've got a result with a json error in it i want a result with a, one of our, our error type in it um, and then we do exactly the same thing for the yaml deserialized config implement deserialized this time we use the yaml library map the error so this, this E is a YAML error, but we wrap it up in our own error type, which could be either YAML or JSON, in this case YAML. Um, and that's how we get it. So the only thing we've messed up is, now when we construct our um, number, or rather, when we construct our JSON deserialized config, we now need to provide that number. So the reason I made this change was, Actually, it probably helps to see that this is a constructor. Like, it might be a bit confusing that um, this is actually constructing one of these empty YAML deserialized config structs. But now it's pretty, hopefully, relatively easy to see you're constructing a JSON deserialized config here. 
passing in a thing. And the reason why I, I, I did it, other than that, making this clearer, is that you can see now that a JSON deserialized config is definitely a different size from a YAML deserialized config because this has a number in it and this doesn't have anything in it. So uh, it makes the point that this DES thing here uh, can hold on to, can own things that have different sizes because it's actually just holding a pointer to those things and those things are stored somewhere else where you can have any size. Uh, any questions and stuff, um, stick them in a comment or uh, talk to me on Mastodon or something else. I um, hope you're enjoying these. Next time we'll move on to module E, which will be more deep stuff. Um, let me know how you're getting on with the series and uh, see you next time.